Greetings, neighbors. This is Reflections, the show sponsored by Paducah Cooperative Ministry, where we, all of us together, do God's work with human hands. My name is Gregory Waldrop, and I'm the pastor at Fountain Avenue United Methodist Church, and I'm your, one of your co-hosts. Our other co-host is Karen Winkle, the pastor at the United Church of Paducah. Welcome, Karen. Good to see you, Gregory. Good to have you with us, and we're extra excited today to have Niaz Kadem here to talk with us about Baha'i. Every once in a while, we do a segment where we introduce, really, ourselves to um, religious neighbors. And so Niaz is here to talk about Baha'i, not a faith that would be very well known in Paducah, but right. a very important one to learn about. So welcome, Niaz. Very good. And, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. I know me. Um, what brought you to Paducah in part was your life as a teacher. Right. Uh -huh. right. So you've been teaching at, at Paducah Tillman. Right now I've been teaching, this is my first year teaching at Tillman. Uh, I graduated from Murray State University and I got, I got very lucky I got hired right out of school to come and teach at, at uh, Tillman. I've had a great experience here mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And so tell us about, uh, tell us about the Baha'i faith. Well in Paducah there, there aren't many Baha'is. It's, it's just my family and a couple of other Baha'is in the surrounding area. So uh, there aren't many of us here. Uh, in the whole world, there are about five million Baha'is throughout the, the entire world. The, the religion was started in Iran in 1844, so it's a relatively young faith, um, and that was the birthplace of the, of the faith. And from there, it has spread to almost every, every country in the world. It, um, I think it is the second most widespread religion after Christianity. Um, in the world, so it's even it's even reached Paducah, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and here we get together with members of the community. Uh, in our area, we get together in each other's homes. Uh, in some bigger communities where there's a larger Baha'i community, maybe they'll have a community center or, or something like that. Um, but here we just get get together in each other's homes. One of the basic tenets of the Baha'i faith. I think the most important one is the unity of, of both religion, humanity, and, and sort of the oneness of God and religion. Uh, that would be the central, uh, I guess, tenet of the faith. And um, Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, his, his name, his title meant the glory of God. Baha'u'llah is an Arabic word, Baha meaning glory, and Allah of God. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was born in Iran in 1817, and he uh, was, was the founder of the Baha'i Faith. He taught that all the religions of the world come from one God. And uh, I, like, I sort of like to look at it like, uh, you might hear the, the example of teachers at school um, and different grades. Uh, that God would guide through humanity through these different manifestations or prophets or messengers and that um, each of these manifestations came to humanity at a different time and a different place but that their central message was often the same the way they told us to live our lives they taught us um, to be good to respect our neighbors to respect our family um, now the reasons that they gave for it may be different. I mean, uh, if, if you look at Hinduism or Buddhism, they believe in, in reincarnation and the idea that if, if you're good, you may, I take Hinduism as an example, you may come back as a cow, which is a great, very respected figure in Hinduism. But if, you're, if you don't lead a good life, maybe you'll come back as a rat, for instance. 
while in the um, Judeo-Christian line, the, the teachings of how to live your life, if you live a good life, if you, um, if you accept Christ or uh, Moses, if you were Jewish, um, then you would get to go to heaven. And then if you did not accept that, you would go to hell. But the teachings about how to live your life are very similar. The golden rule you find in all of these faiths. And so in each of these different religions, it came to a specific people in a specific time throughout history where, where God revealed himself to humankind, gave them laws about how to live their lives and, and how to get along with the people around them. But on the other side of the world, there were people that, that didn't get those, those same teachings and there was no way for that to reach them in a, in a timely fashion. And so Baha'u'llah explained that God revealed to himself to humanity, manifested himself to humanity many different times. And we see that, I guess specifically here in, in Paducah, we see that in the Judeo-Christian line, that Judaism, we all believe, came from God. And then Christianity, when Christ revealed himself to humanity, it wasn't saying that, that Judaism was wrong, but that there was, there was more mm -hmm. that we had to learn from him. And so in each of these faiths, in every religion, there has been a promised day in the future when in Christianity, when Christ would return. In, uh, in Islam, also when Christ returns or when the Mehdi comes back. Uh, in Buddhism, the idea of the fifth Buddha. In uh, Judaism, the return of the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Um, all of these speak of a promised day when there would be justice and peace on earth. And Baha'u'llah taught that this is that day, that he is that promised one of all of the world's religion, and that the purpose of religion and the purpose of the Baha'i faith today is to unite the whole world into one common faith that, and bring justice and peace and unity to the whole world. So that, that's my three-minute version. Yeah, uh, great. Well mm -hmm, done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something... Um, about that then that is it, it, it is so important I think in that it affirms the um, faith expressions of a variety of, of religions um, rather than negates them Correct. which is often the Correct. case I think um, uh, it seems sometimes that religion you know religions are at war with one another as opposed to um, uh, saying you know you you have something um, that was was and is God given that is um, has value yeah. and part of a whole uh -huh. that's mm -hmm. larger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of one of the examples of that 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 I I like to refer to that someone told me once I don't remember where it was it was like if you're if you're climbing up a mountain and you're all going up the mountain and someone uh, comes down from the top of the mountain and says the fastest way to the top is to go straight. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left. You have to go straight up. This is the only way. If anyone comes and tells you to go a different way from what I've told you, then they're gonna take you in a direction that, that isn't, isn't the fastest way to the top. And so if, if one person from one side of the mountain got to the top and another person from the other side came to the top, both would reach the top and look around and say, well, the fastest way was the way I came. But from the top of the mountain that you can see that there are all these different ways to get to that same point. And, uh, and in the Baha'i Faith, we look at all of the different religions as being sort of pointed towards this day, this time. And if you look at how the world has changed in the last 150 years, since, since the Baha'i Faith was started in 1844, the world is a completely different place than anything imaginable beforehand. When Baha'u'llah came and he taught that the world needed to be unified, he uh, told the world leaders, he sent letters to all of the world leaders, um, to the Pope, to uh, Napoleon, uh, to the, the Tsars in Russia, and he said, you need to all come together and uh, 
and work to have unity. You need to disarm and make sure that as, as leaders, it's your responsibility to make sure that the world stays unified and does not fight with each other. They had no way of understanding how the world would change. They had no way of understanding the dire need for that. And in the last 150 years, we have seen how technology and all these different changes have made it so that now we understand the great need for this. Mm -hmm. You know, now we're seeing why that was so important and why we should have done it then. Mm -hmm. Is there a is there a connection? He, he, he came from Iran. Is there a geographical connection there? Are there is there a holy land? Are, are there holy spaces? Uh, where? Tell us about that. Well, sure. Um, the Baha'i Faith started in Iran, and uh, at that time and today, Iran is mostly a Muslim nation, and uh, in Islam. Muhammad is considered the seal of the prophets. He was the last prophet to come. And so when Baha'u'llah claimed that he was a manifestation of God, they, um, they considered the Baha'is there to be heretics because they said that Muhammad was the seal of the prophets. None could come after him. And, uh, and so they exiled Baha'u'llah from Tehran to Baghdad. And he was in Baghdad for many years. From Baghdad, he was then exiled to the Ottoman Empire, which, at, which was Turkey and at that time encompassed what is present day Israel and Egypt even. And while he was in Turkey, he was exiled to Istanbul and Adirne, what is today Adirne, and then eventually to what is present day um, Accra in Israel. Um, there he was imprisoned in Israel for many years and eventually was, was let out of the prison and put under house arrest and then eventually died and was buried outside of uh, Accra and Haifa, Israel. So these spots in Israel are the most holy spots for the Baha'i Faith and that's also where the administrative center of the Baha'i Faith is. So both in Iran, in Baghdad, in Adrianople, in Istanbul, and in Israel, all these places that are associated with Baha'u'llah's life where he lived, mm -hmm. those are all considered holy places for the Baha'is. In Israel is where we have our Baha'i World Center and where the shrine of Baha'u'llah where he is buried and the shrine of, ba of the Bab in Haifa, Israel is. Those are the two holiest spots for Baha'is. Um, that, that would be our holy land. Right now in Baghdad, we don't have access to the holy shrines there and in Iran we still uh, life is not easy for the Baha'is in Iran right now um, things are difficult there so uh, but those would be our holy places and things associated with our life I actually am going to be uh, going next year to serve at the Baha'i World Center in Haifa Israel I'm very excited about that I applied uh, a couple of months ago and recently uh, was invited to go. So, And what will you be doing there? While I'm there, uh, there are a number of volunteers that live in Haifa, live in Israel and work at the Baha'i World Center. There are about 600 Baha'is that live and work there. And while I'm there, I'm going to be working with Baha'i youth that come to do like a gap year, a year of service, maybe between, excuse me, between high school and college and I'll be working with them to help prepare them for their year of service and get them introduced to their, their duties there at the Baha'i World Center. So I'm very excited about yeah. that. Hopefully my uh, experience teaching at the high schools yeah. will, will have helped prepare me for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking, because I'm a, I'm a big believer that the future is always very big, you know, compared to the present. So you're going off to do that. There's no telling then what comes as a consequence of that. You, you can't foresee that, but right, uh -huh. right. I have confidence I, that it'll be good and, and, and wonderful for you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited about that. I'm going to be there for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So after that, 
I don't know if I'll be coming back this way to continue teaching Spanish mm -hmm. or, or what my plans will be. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You give yourself yeah. over to that. Right. Well, I'm wondering when, when Baha'is gather uh, for worship, what might that be like? I'm, you know, you were sure, saying that, sure. that you know, here, here in Paducah, the Baha'is that gather are typically gathering in a home. But yeah. when, what is the worship life like for a Baha'i? Sure. Um, in, in the Baha'i faith, we don't have any clergy. So it is, uh, it's up to each of the Baha'i communities to, to organize themselves, their, their activities. One, one of the activities that we have been doing here in, in this area, actually at my house with my family, is we have started having interfaith devotionals. And uh, what we do at the devotional is we generally invite friends and family uh, from any faith and, and background. And Baha'is all over the world have these devotional meetings, these devotional gatherings. And oftentimes they'll choose a theme for the devotional, maybe based off of something going on in that part of the year. I don't know, here maybe for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. You might have a devotional uh, on the idea of generosity or, or mm -hmm. giving thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. And uh, just invite people that, that also share those values to come together and pray to God for those things and, and to share with each other in, in an atmosphere of, of respect and, and humility, share their prayers from their own faith and to come together and, and mm -hmm. share that. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we've been doing recently. Also, um, in Baha'i communities, you'll find uh, deepening sessions or study circles where people will get together to study the, the holy texts and um, the writings of Baha'u'llah, um, his forerunner, the Bab, and his son, Abdul Baha. Uh, they'll study prayers and, and their holy writings and, and writings from, from the other world's religions mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then we also have children's classes and classes for uh, junior youth, you know, adolescent mm -hmm. age and, and youth, and uh, youth groups that focus on service to the community and, you know, providing, providing an outlet for, for that, as, as many people do in their uh, religious communities. Uh, in our community, we, uh, there are very few children in this area, and so the thing that we're doing here in Paducah, more than anything with, with our friends and neighbors, is the devotional meetings mm -hmm. here in Paducah, uh, which you guys are both mm -hmm. welcome to come mm -hmm. and join us for sometime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, you, were, you were raised Baha'i. I was mm -hmm. raised Baha'i. Mm -hmm. um, on my father's side of the family, my father's Persian. He's from Iran. He was born in Tehran. Uh, my family goes back five generations. Um, my mother was raised Catholic. She was uh, from Ohio. And when she was in her 20s, she uh, was living in California working as an LPN. And there were two Baha'i uh, respiratory therapists that worked there with her. And they became friends and she became a Baha'i while she was in California. And when she came home to Toledo from California to visit her parents, my father had been studying at the University of Toledo, mm -hmm. and they met at a Baha'i meeting there. So, mm -hmm. uh, and here I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that I, um, you know, and my knowledge of Baha'i is very, very limited, but it seems to me um, the word that I'll use, and it, it, it sounds like there's judgment involved, but um, and I, I don't mean that, but it seems fairly elevated. It um, in you know, in its respect for um, the various uh, religions of the world, but also in, a, uh, in, in its understanding of kind of the unity of the human race. Mm -hmm. And it sounds also that there's not, um, that there's equality between um, men and women, that that's, the, uh, that's a value and that also is, would be a goal. That there are a number of things about Baha'i that really kind of call forth the best in in the human person and the human family there there are a number of teachings actually mm -hmm. uh before when i had mentioned the unity of the world another one that that you just mentioned the the equality of women and men is a teaching of baha'u'llah that is very important i i think you're right 
And I think it's interesting to think of that in a historical perspective. Even today, in, in an Islamic nation, where women are still forced to wear a veil to cover their face, to imagine in 1844, mm -hmm. in, the, in the late 1800s, even in the United States, to, to claim that men and women were equal mm -hmm. and should be treated as such was a hefty, hefty claim at that time. Right. Today in Western society, it has become an idea that we, we all accept and, and understand. But at that time, to, to say such things was, it was intense, yeah. you know. Um, and so I, I think, mm -hmm. I think that you're right. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, aside, also, another idea is the, the equality of races and that racism is one of the great social ills of, of our time period. And, um, and today we're, we're coming to see that, but I think that even, even today, although it has, it has passed as a viable opinion to hold, there's still things that we're suffering from, even, even in our community mm -hmm. here, that things that we have to work through. Um, I've been lucky enough recently to get involved with some of the programs with the interracial men's group and the interracial women's group. Not long ago, they had a poetry jam at the Market House Theater. I don't know if you mm -hmm. uh, heard about that, but that was, that was a, a great thing to be able to participate in as a Baha'i and, and someone who feels that those things are important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a hymnody? Is there particular music associated with the Baha'i faith? Well, there are many Baha'i musicians and artists uh, there are Baha'is all over the world, and depending on what country you're in and what background they're from, you'll find that, that type of music. Uh, there's, there are some great Baha'i choirs that, uh, that have traveled around the world uh, singing songs from all, all different uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So there, I guess the answer to that would be no, there is no specific Baha'i music, mm -hmm. no. Um, it sounds very, rather than, uh, you know, very structured and hierarchical, it sounds like there's a lot of freedom within the local community to really express for itself um, the, 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 the core understandings of Baha'i. Uh, organic might be the word that, that it's like a growing thing, it's a happening. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's very dependent on on the community uh, to to stand up and and make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess grassroots. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of what Baha'is uh, do is focused on helping the community build capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, many Baha'is are often you'll meet Baha'is that have worked with social and economic development projects. Um, when I was between, in, really in the middle of my studies in university, I, I moved to Costa Rica for a year and a half, and I taught there. I taught English and math on a high school that was started on an Indian reservation in Costa Rica by a mm. Baha'i family. Mm. And um, I think it's interesting, you, you often hear of uh, missionaries going out to go in and do work and, and teach. And oftentimes, Baha'is will go and work in these social and economic development projects. I think one difference would be that there, there's a focus that no matter where you are and what you're doing, you should always be teaching your faith. Mm -hmm. And that when, when they go to do something like that, it's, it's for service. Mm -hmm. And the teaching of the faith is something that they're doing all the time, whether mm -hmm. they're there for service or, mm -hmm. or otherwise. So that was that was a neat experience that I got to have, and part of what taught me Spanish yeah. and, and started mm -hmm. me on that path. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky. Mm -hmm. Very lucky. Well, we have just a little bit of time left, and I want to yeah. be sure, since this is kind of just an overview of of Baha'i, that you yeah, have an opportunity yeah. just to lift up any any core thing that you uh, feel is essential for us to know today. Well. You know, we've, we've gone over many, many of the topics. Uh, I guess it would be important to, 
uh, invite anyone who is interested to uh, find out more information. Uh, one way to do that would be online at uh, www.bahai.org. Um, that's the International Baha'i uh, Communities website. And uh, there you'd find more information about the specific tenets of the faith and the history of the faith. Um, and, and really, for, for anyone interested in participating in the devotionals, I think that it's, uh, it's a great activity mm -hmm. and one that would be great if more people did it, you know, not just the Baha'is. Uh, I think it's, I have had the opportunity to go and visit a couple of the different uh, churches and the Jewish uh, temple here in Paducah. I got to go to a Seder in in January it was uh, Shabbat it was the it was the Seder for when the trees became a year a yeah, new, Shubat, another year Shubat, uh, do you remember the tomb, name of it Shuvat tomb or something like that yeah. and it was it was beautiful it was it was the first time I had been to a, a Jewish temple and so you know to be able to do this and mm -hmm. what you guys are doing here this is this is a great service to the community, and I thank you. And if you. someone were to, to join you for one of those de devotions, they wouldn't necessarily need to be afraid that you were going to evangelize them. You no, kind of, you, no. They get to bring who they are with them. How would they, how would they be in touch? How would they find that? I guess they could uh, contact me mm -hmm. uh, at... Um, my email address uh -huh. is uh -huh. niazkadem at gmail.com and uh, they could contact uh -huh. me through that or, or any of the other Baha'is that they know. Uh -huh. And really what, what we're hoping in those gatherings is that people would bring something uh -huh. from their own uh -huh. faith and uh -huh. share it with uh -huh. us. Uh -huh. uh, and it's an opportunity. I think the goal of that is to come together and show that even though we come from different backgrounds, we can value the same uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. And, is it uh, regular? It, does it meet every so often? We've uh, been doing it once a month. We've been doing it once uh, a month. Friday is that? Uh, what, what's the date? What what time? What part? We've of the been week? doing dinner and devotions six o'clock at my house. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but not a particular day of the week. Just randomly. on Saturdays, I on think Saturdays. it's been. But mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. because it was easy for us. Yeah. 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 Well, Niaz, we thank you for being with hey, us and for sharing so with our audience. And also, just blessings upon you as you, you launch forth into a new chapter in your life and one that I uh, trust will be full of um, good lessons and good service on your part. Niaz, thank you for being with us. Gregory, yep. good to be together. You. Thank you for watching today here um, reflections, and we just invite you with Paducah Cooperative Ministry to do God's work with our human hands. Shalom. Shalom.